Hello guys and welcome back to another Fat Jeeves video. I am sorry I have been posting lately, been very busy, but hey, I'm back. So now guys, in today's video, we're actually gonna be cutting these fenders and we're also gonna be painting them with something called the Herculiner. It has a nice rough texture to it, so let's check it out. Let's get started. All right guys, so the first thing we're actually gonna be doing is removing the inner fender because we're gonna save these and we're gonna reinstall them back. So the first step, first thing you wanna do is remove these little pushing pins so it will release the inside of the fender. And then you have to release it. Once you have cut or removed all of them, you're gonna to wanna to pick up the fender upwards. It'll crack, you hear that? It'll release. There you go. You see how it came out? Now the next step would be to remove these little pushing pins. There's about five of them in different locations. And then you also have to remove this 10 millimeter bolt. <laughs> to remove the pins, you could either pull down or you can use a flat screwdriver to pop them out. From the side. Wash those up before putting them in. Now, as you can tell, this is why we're going to be saving the inner fenders. It actually covers a lot. So we don't want to expose all these parts, even though it's okay if they do, but we want to protect them. So it's all dirty. We got to clean that up. Now, the next step, too, would be to remove the side marker. There's a little pin. Okay, after you have removed the inner fender, we're gonna be removing the top fender. So there's one little pushing clip here, and then these you have to pull up. Those are clips as well, but you have to pull up in order for it to release. All right guys, now the next step would be to measure and tape up where you wanna cut it. You know, that all depends on your type of style, how aggressive you want it, that's all up to you. The way I did do it though, I did cut more. I believe this is six inches because four inches would be the bracket that holds the fender. So I don't want it to be showing, so I added a little bit two more inches so that you wouldn't be able to see it. No, let's cut. All right guys, so now to cut the fenders, you can use many tools. Um, all I have is a grinder, so I'm gonna try my best to cut it with the grinder, but I know you can use a Dremel as well. And some people I've heard they've used sauce. I don't know how they do it, but they done it. Let's get started. Alright guys, and then once you have cut the fender, the next thing would be to mark up where you have cut. So the next thing you're going to be cutting is the support, the thing that holds the fender. I'm going to try to cut a little less so it's not too visible, but I'm also going to try to preserve most of it that I can't so like that it stays nice and strong. So my fender lines up with the, the outer lines. I'm going to be cutting is the inner lines. So like that you won't be able to see it as much. So all of these right here, this is what I'm gonna be cutting. Right there. Alright guys, once you have finished cutting
cutting the fender support. You can put the fender on, see if you like it, tweak it up, you can do whatever you want to it. Now the next step would be down to sand this and put the trim. All right guys, so I went ahead and sand down the fender. Reason being is because I'm gonna be painting it. I don't want the paint falling or cracking or anything like that. So after I finished cleaning the fender up with acetone, we're gonna be putting the trim around so it looks nice and professional, and then we'll start with the painting. All right guys, now we're gonna start putting on the trim. We're gonna start from bottom to top. All right guys, so when you guys finish putting on the trim, this is how it should look. Remember, I sanded mines down, that's why it looks faded. I'm also gonna be painting mines. I'm gonna be painting it with the trim. I want it to be all one piece, just like that. The trim stays even longer, because I've heard this does fall. Some people super glue it. I'm gonna be painting it together, so it looks like one entire piece. All right guys, now we're gonna be moving on to the rear. Remember, with the front and the rear, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. All right, so we're gonna be doing the same thing. Let's remove these little rivets. All right guys, once you have removed the push pins, this one on this side, the rear, it doesn't have any bolts holding it. They're all push pins as well. So there's one there. Here's the second one. I believe this is the third one right here. Fourth and then the fifth. So it's the same thing as the front. Just pull them out and then the whole rear will come out. For the rears, you do not have to remove the fenders. So the first thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taping it and measuring it to the specs I want. Remember guys, that's up to you. After I have cut it, I'm gonna remove it to sand and prep it, and then I'm gonna be painting them. These you don't have to remove because there's no there's no support at the bottom. It's just a harder plastic being held on by uh, push pins. Let's see, this one right here. Be cutting mines, so I measured it. I'm gonna be doing one inch from here to here and three and a half from here to this side. Remember, it's up to you guys. However you guys want the style, it's all up to you. Once you have finished cutting it, you're gonna wanna trim it just like the front. Good morning guys, today is day two. Yesterday got dark and I don't wanna keep working on the fenders because I didn't wanna wake up neighbors. But today we're gonna actually gonna be cleaning them up and we're gonna be painting them. Today's painting day. So I'm cleaning them up because of course I've gone off roading, it's full of dirt and I don't want the dirt to contaminate the paint and then you know, you know the whole deal. So we're gonna be cleaning them up actually and then now painting them. I'm also gonna be painting my front bumper. I just finished cleaning it up because you know, 
it's faded out, got scratches in it. So they're gonna, I'm gonna be painting the front bumper the same as the fender. So it's all gonna be matching. So it's gonna look, you know, beauty. Guys, so this is the paint I'm gonna be using, the Hercule liner, uh, truck bed liner. Um, this is what I'm gonna be painting the fenders and the front and rear bumper. So when the box comes with the actual paint itself, the rollers it brings two, a brush to get the nice corners and stuff, and a scuff pad to you know scuff up the area you're gonna be using. All right, so let's get started. <laughs> We have them cleaned up. Everything's ready to paint. All right, guys. Now I'm gonna be painting those. I'll get back once I'm done painting them. And this is going to be the first coat. This is how they came out. Not bad at all. I actually really, really, really like how they came out. So those are the fronts. These are the rears. Um, this is only the first coat as well. They came out great. Bumpers are done as well. Second coat is going to be done tomorrow when there's more sunlight. So for the meantime, we're going to be cutting the fenders, inner fender. Now we're going to be cutting the inner fender. So like that you won't see everything and nothing will be exposed. What I'm going to be doing though, I'm going to try to cut, people cut before this. I'm going to try to cut after this a little bit so I can still clip them on and it looks nice and flush. Because usually people, they'll drill a hole here and zip tie it. It's not bad. I'm trying to stay away from the zip ties. I want everything to stay nice and flush without using zip ties or anything like that. Or drilling into the actual body of the car. That's the main issue. But uh. So, right, guys, so once you have cut the fender, inner fender, sorry, this is how it's sort of gonna come out. Obviously, I gotta put in the little pins, pushing pins, but that's gonna hold it there. And look how nice it's gonna look. Now, let's go to the front. I'm not gonna put these up yet because I'm gonna clean them out and the inside of the fender. All right, guys, so now for the front inner fender, we're gonna follow is this line. It's a little crooked, it's because it's, uh, it's bent, but you see. So we're gonna follow this line this is going to be cut straight through here so i'm gonna mark it with my finger use a pencil or a sharpie just being big. and then here it's going to be cut straight down so all this is where we're going to cut all right so i'll be right back once i finish cutting it all right guys so once you cut it this is how the finished product is going to look yes there is a little gap there i'm not a big fan of it but past this past the line here there's a huge big like plastic piece that comes out. So this was the only way we were able to cut it. It's not too bad, but it's better than having nothing there. So I am gonna try my best to try to slide it over just a little bit. And I might actually use a little bit of zip ties to put this piece into there. But let's see where that leads us. So now I'm actually gonna go and do the other two sides. Once I'm done with the other two sides, I'm gonna clean it and i'll be right back to show how everything guys how everything came out so all right guys this is the finished product it looks a little dusty because it's been raining so sorry about that but it is amazing i love that rough texture to it came out really nice I'm really happy with it to be the original fenders 
All right, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed everything. Guys, if you guys want to see different content, don't forget to comment down below what you guys would like to see do next. Also, guys, there's a lot of things coming up for this Jeep, so please stay tuned. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Might get little sneak peeks, something like that. So please stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the next one.